So let's just dive right into it. I'm going to be installing and switching to KDE Neon for at least a week. But I'm in the BIOS here because I'm doing this on my workstation and I have to switch to the USB thumbstick to get to the KDE Neon installer. So I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. Folks really seem to like my Why is KDE so buggy video, but I think that it kind of created a false impression about how I feel about KDE and the KDE project in general. See, I don't hate or dislike KDE at all. Just because I don't use it doesn't mean I don't like it. And even though that video was more or less talking about the perception that KDE is very buggy, I thought that I was helping to defend the project and kind of explain why people may have that perception, but it seems like a lot of people felt that perhaps I was just bashing on KDE or calling it buggy. Now when I captured the clips for that video, that was actually the first time I had used KDE, the latest version of KDE and KDE Neon, in a long, long time. And quite honestly, I was really, really impressed at how far it had come. Early on in that video, there was a bug where the window manager like got stuck or something, but I attribute that to the fact I was running it in a VM. I don't think that the window manager is just so buggy that it broke down as soon as I logged in. The other reason why I felt now was a good time to try out KDE Neon is because the future of Ubuntu's main desktop environment is really up for question. I mean, I know that they've already said that they're going to be using GNOME for Ubuntu 18.4, but we're already starting to see cracks form in the brand new friendship between GNOME and Ubuntu. So honestly, I think it's up for debate which desktop environment is going to be the primary for Ubuntu 18.4. So in the first part of this video, we're going to be installing KDE Neon from start to finish. Since I'm installing it on top of an existing Ubuntu 16.4 install, I'm going to be using my old home partition because I don't want to have to reinstall all of my Steam games and play on Linux games and things. Everything else about this install is going to be pretty standard. I'm pretty sure KDE Neon uses the same installer that Kubuntu does. If nothing else, they're both based on Ubiquity, which is the main Ubuntu installer, so there's nothing special here. I did run into a bit of a problem trying to create the boot partition. After I deleted the previous boot partition, I couldn't actually select a BIOS reserved boot partition for my first hard drive. It was kind of a weird bug because I had to completely restart the installer to have the reserved BIOS area appear in the select dropdown. But once I got past that, everything else was just the standard install process, nothing special. Once the install was finished, I rebooted and was greeted by the grub shell. I initially thought that the bootloader didn't get installed correctly, but it turns out instead of wiping the grub entries, it just added a new one, and the default one pointed at the old Ubuntu install, which wasn't there, so I saw the grub shell. Once I had the BIOS point to the right partition, I was able to get past grub and make it to the KDE login screen. I'm pretty sure this happened because the way I try to preserve my old partitions, so if you were to do a brand new KDE install or install it over top an old install, I don't think that you would see this issue. So now that the install process is done, I can say that the install is pretty okay. I'm pretty sure that the issues that I ran into are because of the way I partitioned my hard drive, so I wouldn't at all blame Neon for those issues. So logging in for the first time, it looks like everything started up good. It says I got some updates and I connected to the internet, which is good. So this looks like a totally bone stock default KDE interface, huh? Let's check out what kind of updates there are. It should have updated during the install, but it never seems like that works right. I'll tell you what, I haven't used KDE Discover in, in I don't even know how long, and this thing is slick. Discover blows GNOME software out of the water. This thing is nice. It doesn't look like I can interact with it much while it's updating, so let's take a look at the system settings. So there's a few changes I need to make before I can really settle in. Need to change the keyboard, change the mouse so we do a double click. A uh, screen lock drives me nuts, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And the default 10 minute screen timeout is also annoying, so let's go ahead and increase that to 30. And that's all I'm going to do for right now. So let's see if I remember how to change the desktop background. In elementary and Unity, I've always just opened the picture I want to be my desktop background, and the setting is there, but I'm not seeing it in Gwynview. Which doesn't really bother me because it seems kind of awkward to have to go to the image you want to be the desktop background. I thought that the normal way of doing this is to right click your desktop background and then select an image from there, but that never really worked right on elementary. So we got our background set and the updates are done, so wow, this software management list is, uh, it's not allowed, but it's really hard to kind of see what's going on. Yeah, the way this is organized is awkward, I can't really tell what's going on. Oh wow, and these icons don't have tooltips, that's odd. So I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. 
There's a lot of tuning and tweaking I'm going to do, and then I'm going to use KDE Neon for a week or two, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk about my experiences with it. I also have a few videos and benchmarks planned, and I'm going to do those videos with KDE Neon. I'm really looking forward to the benchmarking videos because, I mean, look, we're not even using a gigabyte of RAM with all this running. Now, KDE has a reputation for being really heavy and resource intensive, but I don't know, 700 megabytes of RAM? I'd say that's pretty good. So if you like this video and you're looking forward to the next KDE Neon video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and tell me what you thought in the comments. Your guys' support is awesome, and thanks for watching.